welcome back. We are hopefully gonna be getting our electrics sorted, even though we said that last time, but now we actually are. If you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as The Whole World or Nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels on our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. When we left you last week, those of you who watched the end bit will probably remember that we promised we'd be building our bathroom, fixing a broken seat belt and removing our seats. But making these videos is quite similar to doing the van build in that more often than not, the thing you think you're going to be doing next isn't what you end up doing next at all. So in a change to the schedule this week, we're actually going to be getting our electric set up. So unfortunately, you'll just have to hang on another week for all that other stuff. We've got a diagram. We've got to um, put the big cables on the battery bank to connect them and go from there. I'm not saying very much because <laughs> this is Sarah's bag. I don't know anything about these electrics. You're going to be my apprentice, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me have a go at explaining this to you. We have got three 12 volt, 110 amp hour batteries that we're gonna connect together to make a big battery bank. The way that we are gonna connect them is in parallel as opposed to a series, which means just basically that you connect all the positives of the batteries together and all the negatives of the batteries together so that it stays a 12 volt system, 12 volt battery bank, but it adds all the amp hours together so that it will make in total a 330 amp battery bank, which I have calculated is enough that we need to power everything that we want to be using electric wise in the van. To connect it together, to connect the individual batteries together, we're gonna use 35, millimeter cable which is the size that I've calculated that we need for our specific system. Yeah, let's get cracking. So what have you done? Well, I haven't even started yet and what I did is I just got an assortment of terminal lugs mm. but it turns out they only go up to 25, so they don't fit on a 35. So I'm stuck at the first hurdle. Wonderful. We're so going to have to go the electrical place and get some bigger lugs. Let's go. Yep, it's shot. So. Can be. What is Plumby? Another electrical store. That's what happened. Don't have him. Well, that trip was an absolute disaster. Yeah, I know. Like, as if you can't find them anywhere. So we're going to have to go out again tomorrow. Yeah, there's other stuff that I can be doing. So I'm just going to crack on. So after that absolute disaster last night, <laughs> we're up nice and early. Sarah's got a list of things that we need to get. Yeah, there's even more now than I originally thought. So it's actually probably quite good because we would have just had to go again today anyway. This is true. But we found out the places that actually sell them. So hopefully this should be a relatively straightforward journey, right? Yeah, hopefully. The thing was, they call them different things in different places. The main thing that we needed that we didn't have the right size of in some places they're called terminal lugs, in some places they're called crimp lugs, and then in some places they're called cable lugs. So when we were searching for them, it wasn't coming up that they had them because we weren't searching for the right thing. After a quick trip around the DIY shops, we managed to scrabble together the 35mm lugs and the various other bits and pieces that we needed and got to work piecing the system together. So I've got the two ends on. Nice and tight, giving them both a good wiggle, make sure they don't come off. So I'm just going to put the heat shrink over. And there you go. 
if you watched us mounting them on the roof, you'll already know that we opted for three 150 watt solar panels. These are connected in series to give a total of 450 watts of solar power. The link on screen right now is to a blog post on our website where we explain in detail exactly how we calculated the sizes of everything in our 12 volt electrical system. All right, what do you want me to put this in then? I've just put these uh, wire connectors onto the wires from the fan. And I have nailed in a couple of wire clips that they're secured to these beams and to the frame as well. And what I'm going to do now is just connect the wire that's going to run from the fan to the battery. I don't know where it's going. Well, yeah, to the fuse box, but down, down yeah, that end. Yeah. Down that end. I'm going to connect these up and I'm going to run them all the way down. And hopefully this is going to be the first thing that we're going to get working, right? Woo! It's exciting. We need it today as well, it's hot. And down this end we've got the battery bank all hooked up now in parallel. So that's these big fat 35mm wires that you can see here. This is the um, isolator box with the cables coming down from the solar panels. So they're ready to be hooked up to the MPPT. I've put a positive wire in already that's coming through to circuit breaker and I've got the negative wire coming out into the battery bank as well here the last bit that I need to do is just put another positive cable coming from the bottom of the circuit breaker onto the battery bank and connect these into it because you do it in that order according to the instructions do the battery bank first and then put the solar panel wires in and yeah that should be that bit done. I've still got these two wires that I need to put into the MPPT so that the solar panels are charging the battery but we've got one of the loads on which is the fan and in theory because that's hooked up to the batteries if I put the fuse in to connect the circuit the fan should come on. Are we gonna give it a go? Yeah. Does the fan just come on automatic? No. Right so I put it in and then we have to turn it on over there. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. This is the moment of truth. I feel a bit scared. You ready? Yeah. Just press the on, yeah? Press the on button. I don't know if I pressed it. Uh oh. Oh. Oh! I know what's happened. I know what's happened. I haven't uh, flicked the circuit breaker back. The oh, circuit's broken. <laughs> Okay, come back, come back. There we go. Okay, take two. <laughs> you ready? I don't think I'll ever be ready. Okay. <gasps> Whoa! Ah! Yes, we did it, we did it, we did it. We have electricity. Oh my gosh. Look at that bad oh, boy. I'm so happy I could cry. <laughs> We did that! You did that. Whoa, you helped as well. Not really. <gasps> Boom! Okay, so my red is positive, so positive, positive, so that's going into the positive. Alrighty, so I'm going to turn the power on between the battery bank and the solar charger. Stand on! Yeah? Yeah! Look at that! So, so what does that mean? It's got, you've got to let it register whether it's a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. Okay. It's just going through the different settings. I wonder how long you need to leave it. I don't know. Now that's sorted itself out, I think, I'm going to turn the isolator switch on, which allows the electricity to come down through the solar panels and into here. And then this is the box that then converts that into usable power for the batteries. So, here we go. What's meant to happen? I don't know. <laughs> so there's no sun actually hitting the solar panels right now? No, it's saying it's it's got a little moon. So there's a smiley face on here, which is good, obviously. Yeah. But it's there's a moon, so I think it thinks it's night time. There's still a little bit of sun, so we're just going to move the van to see if we can get some sunlight on it um, to see if that changes it on the system. It didn't. 
and after lots of troubleshooting and a few choice swear words, we eventually figured out it was a faulty connection between two of the solar panels. Fortunately, this Unistrut system makes it super simple to unhook and move our solar panels around, so it was pretty simple to replace the guilty connector. So all that's left to do is connect the solar panels back up to the system. Yes. And hopefully this little moon is going to change to the daytime. It's going to start charging. Okay, so we're all wired back in. Yep. Moment of truth. It's good to turn it on. For about the 15th time today. <laughs> it's this moon that we're wanting to see change, right? Yeah, there needs to be something happening between that and the batteries. If you can see there, it says zero volts, zero amps. So yeah. hopefully that's going to change. Go on, twist Wanna it. Wanna put this on? Is it immediate? No. Oh yeah. Yeah? 29.6 volts, 5 amps. There we go. How does that make you feel? So good. Like, so, so good. There we go. 50.9 volts. We did it. Well done. Yee! Now that we've got the solar panels completely working and they are charging the batteries, we've just realised that even though we're not putting our full electrical system in at the moment, we can start putting different elements in. So. We've decided that we're going to put a USB port in which will allow us to charge our phones in the van while we're working. Right, so that is the negative screwed in. Do you want your fuse? I need the fuse. And once I pop that in, this should light up, right? Yep. There we go. Yay! So you can plug your phone in now and charge it in the van. Nice. That is exciting, isn't it? That's good news. And it's all coming from the sun. You know? Self-sufficient. It's cool. It's charging. Woo! <laughs> Well that's it for this week friends, we hope you enjoyed it, if you did please bash that thumbs up and drop us a comment down below. If you're not already subscribed then there's probably no hope for you by now so we won't even bother suggesting you to hit that subscribe button or tap the little alarm bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. But you probably should, because next week, besides fixing our broken seatbelt, framing our bathroom, hiking our seats out and carpeting our cab wall, we also discover a leak that gets us all worked up and ready to sack off the whole van build.